All right, what's up my friends? Welcome. We're doing some match analysis. These are I'm going to go over my matches from the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Set Championship. And uh, I'm going to go over all my future matches. I have seven in total. Uh, some are abbreviated. And uh, we're starting on day one. We're going to hop in here. Round number six. This is game number two against Reg Orange. I am playing the Azorius Auras deck. And Greg is playing... Um, Greg is playing Arclight Phoenix. I had one game one. Again, some of these come in halfway through because they were like time, sh time shifted matches. But um, we're going to jump right in. So Phoenix matchup, pretty good for Auras, I think. Um, basically comes down to like you asking them a lot of questions every single turn. And if there comes a point where they can't answer a question, they usually they usually lose. So great hand for me here. We see Esper Sentinel, Self of Savior, Saram. Uh, could go Savior into Saram here. Ever, although I really like leading on Esper Sentinel because it puts a lot of pressure on them to either kill it or start drawing cards immediately. Um, so lead on Sentinel. Greg is on a mulligan here. Uh, Greg's hand, obviously I can't see his hand when I'm playing, but uh, is okay, a little slow. We draw a Drake, and now we have a lot of options this turn. So we have a lot of options this turn. We have, uh, we have Savior, Double Saram, Cerulean Drake, and the big thing here is that I, I'm pretty sure Greg has a removal spell, because Greg did nothing proactively on uh, on his turn. For heat, we obviously see the Heat in hand, but I can't see that when I'm playing, obviously. So pretty sure there's a kill spell here, and uh, could play the Cerulean Drake to kind of play around it and uh, play them that can't be killed, but at the same time, um, could... Greg could also have a uh, Mystical Dispute, which he had a number of copies of in his sideboard. Uh, so a spot here where, because I have two Saroms, I can just jam a Saram. I could try and play Savior first, but with, with two Saroms in hand, I think playing Saram here is very reasonable because now there's two things in play that kind of must be killed. It costs two to kill one of them, and Greg is just behind the eight ball. So we're kind of just putting enough things in play where Greg has to answer all of them and can't realistically. So and step right fires off the heat. Decides to go for the Sentinel and not the Saram. Trying to say that I don't want to try and play against Sentinel in a longer game. Greg Greg draws a consider, and now Greg's in a really awkward spot because he has iteration, but he wants to try and hit a one mana red removal spell to kill my Saram. But in order in order to do that, would need to play the land first, which is super awkward because you play your land first and don't hit, and now you're not gonna do it. So he goes goes for iteration, and now he has to hit a red land and a one mana removal spell. Uh, otherwise, the Saram's gonna we're gonna untap with Saram. And like I said, this matchup it's all about that one turn where they can't answer what you're doing you get to start going off at that point. So here's iteration, uh, a braid to hand. Of course, I can't see that. And then a, a Dragon Rage Channeler to exile a blue land, say go. Couldn't ask for a better uh, sequence for me. So now I'm off to the races. There's no blue card with it that stops me here, obviously. Uh, there are no fading hopes in his deck list. Very little bounce in these uh, in these uh, Phoenix decks. So now I get to pick what I want to do here. I have two white sources. We're going to start on an aura. And uh, the plan is to play Selfless Savior if I don't draw a land, but I do, which is very lucky. So now I get to play another Aura and Savior. And now I have a 4-4 Saram protected and a great hand. And I'm just in phenomenal shape here. Uh, just phenomenal shape. And again, this is a sort of like how this matchup plays out, where basically, you know, once they can't answer what you're doing, if their draw is not, you know, exceptionally lining up well, uh, things just got to control here. So now, even if they were to kill the Saram, our hand's still full. And they're on the back foot. They haven't played a threat yet, which is really, really important. So there's your aura. There's your savior. Also, because Greg played the Soaring City as a land, that was one of his two bounce spells. He had one Soaring City and one Brazen Borrower in the entire deck list to, to bounce my stuff, which is huge. So it's important to note that this tournament was open deck list. This is the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Set Championship. Basically a pro tour, uh, open deck list event played in arena. Split format, alchemy and historic. This is, of course, the, the historic rounds. And... Um, we see here iteration, a pretty good one. It's a land and a heat, uh, but at this point now I have so many things set up that it's going to be impossible for Greg to get out of this. You know, so now the heat basically just kills the uh, kills the dog. Um, takes the second heat here, so can fire off two heats here, but doesn't have delirium let yet to get to, to, to kill the four four anyway. And even if both things die here, my hand is still two more spirit dancer effects and a cerulean drake, and I've got Loris hanging out too. So. Greg fires off a looting. The looting will give Delirium by discarding a land, but now can't kill Savior and Saram. So, fire out the Heat of a Saram. I self a Savior, obviously. And once again, Greg is tapped out, and I have free reign. Returns an Arclight Phoenix, which is fine. Arclight does block pretty well in these spots. But she's going to attack, actually. going to be a little aggressive here. I draw another Doggy. Uh, so now I have no more Auras, but I'm once again just resetting up my uh, my board here. I get to play Savior. Play Cerulean Drake to block the Arclight Phoenix. And uh, just act for five and just keep on going, honestly. So there's a swing. Play Cerulean Drake. 
play the doggy, play the Lance Apt, and now we're in a really good spot. Because once again, uh, Greg needs two things to kill the Saram. Even if Greg kills Saram, I have Spirit Dancer and Saram in hand. Uh, but Drake is holding the fort, and things are looking really, really good. So, Greg's going to think it through here, play Channeler. Probably going to be Channeler Heat a Braid. And again, this will kill my Saram uh, by killing the Savior first. You can go for a little Surveil action. Then I sack the Savior. In response, Greg will, will unholy heat the Saram, which will work. But, again, still at 15, have a Cerulean Drake in play and tons of great stuff in my hand. At this point, the damage has been done because I've drawn like four or five cards off these Saram's. So I have a lot of gas behind, which is very, very important. And a big reason why I don't like Light Paws, uh, because I explained it in the deck tech. Uh, but I want to have cards in my hand, not just one big dumb thing in play. So, draw a Lance, not an Aura, but now I get to buy Lurus, play a Spirit Dancer, and uh, be all set up for next turn, and Greg isn't really getting anywhere just yet. So, past turns, I go. Land draw for Greg, not too good. Goes for an opt. Again, Darcy is uh, is scrying. Going to keep a, a consider. Scary for me because I saw Greg top and I'm like, oh man, topping's not good. But it was just consider actually. So just looking for another re, 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 uh, redraw. So consider. And you're going to draw Bone Crusher Giant. Now this is actually devastating uh, because Bone Crusher Giant has a damage prevention clause which will kill my Cerulean Drake if it blocks. Uh, however, unfortunately for Greg, I don't know if this is a misclick or if this was a, just a, a mistake, but Greg does, declines to use the Bone Crusher, because now he's reading it, before damage. So now he's in a post-combat use Bone Crusher to kill my Spirit Dancer. If he had cast this pre-combat, I'm sorry, or in combat after I blocked, my Cerulean Drake would have died. Uh, so that's pretty, uh... Pretty dangerous. I chose to play the uh, Spirit Dancer over the Saram's. The upside was higher. Uh, just more damage possibility. And if they can kill it, whatever. It's fine. It's close. It's close. And, uh, yes, all the matches I see today are matches that were on coverage. Uh, I did not I did, I did not locally record my, record my matches. So. so, now I get to play Saram. And now, this is where you get in kind of the lock going. So, you have Sur Luris. I'm sorry, uh, Saram. Luris plus Selfa Savior. Play a Saram and say go. I've got Ores in my graveyard. And once again... Uh, Selfless Savior is hanging out to keep things uh, good for me. So, they, uh, so Greg needs more than one spell to kill my stuff. And we got Auras going. We got Saram going. And we're in great shape. Um, had the Bone Crusher, would the Bone Crusher play have mattered? I, I don't know. Um, I would still be at 10 here. Greg could have a lot of power in play, but I'd still have a lot of stuff going on also. It might have not mattered. Uh, it might have not mattered. Um... I might have still won anyway, but still a pretty big mistake, unfortunately, for Greg. Whether it was a mistake or a misclick, you know, like maybe just didn't get priority at the right time, I don't really know. But so here comes an attack. I mean, the channel has to, block, has to attack anyway. Uh, but at this point, there's so much pressure on the board that Greg can't really attack with the arc light. I block with the Drake. Only one Bone Crusher in Greg's deck. Again, open deck list, I know this. So no fear anymore. And uh, now that I can, I can play around it anyway, just one copy regardless. So And now I'm just off to the races. Now we just have an entire graveyard full of good spells. As per Sentinel, we're drawing cards. Uh, play Sentinel here, because if uh, Greg's going to respond, I want to see the, uh, the card draw off of it. And uh, interesting spot here. We're just going to put the Cartouche on the Lurus to make it a 4-3 first strike attacker so I can gain some life back. You know, I think getting cheesed out is the worst way to lose here. Uh, so then we're going to uh, put that on the Lurus, fire in for an attack. And we don't mind attacking with Saram here, because if it trades with Phoenix, we have a second Saram in our hand. That also allows the, the woman to get in as well. Gonna leave Cerulean Drake back, just in case. Um, don't want to see Greg, like, pop off, like, you know, looting into looting into looting for, like, four Phoenixes and just get cheesed out or something like that. So, just gonna attack, play it safe, gain some life. We're way ahead here. We have protection out the Wazoo. Uh, Sentinel, Cerulean Drake, everything good to go here. So, feeling pretty good. Greg does a land, fires off a looting. At this point, Greg's basically just dead. Uh, at one life, even with all four Phoenixes, uh, it wouldn't kill me. And then, of course, uh, we have the Cerulean Drake, which can pop into that last point. At last point. So, looking pretty good here. Looking pretty good. Lucklor, thanks to the resub. You great. You great. So, at this point, I was 5-0. Uh, and 0. This is the second round of Historic. This is still day one. It's funny. Greg actually draws the Brazen Borrowers. That's, that's the only bounce spell in his entire deck. But, realistically, there's just not much that can actually be done with this. Um, you know, it could bounce the Lurus in theory. Um, the bounce effects are really good in a tight game. 
why I put a lot of auras on one creature. That's not really how this game is playing out, obviously. So bouncing Luris wouldn't really do that much. Um, looting discards and... Uh, yeah, here comes the Channeler because it has to attack, of course, which is not really ideal for Greg. It's funny how the Channeler uh, drawback actually kind of comes up in these matches. You know, usually it doesn't matter that much, but... So, draw land doesn't matter too much. I think for a, a bit here, this is the kind of spot where, like, a player has a game visibly locked up, but we're playing for, you know, a, a lot of stuff going on, so I'm going to take my time to figure it out here. So, that's the the first uh, the first feature match. goes to me uh, over, Greg, over, over Greg Orange. And, uh, and what's that? Uh, yeah, let's jump right next. Up next is round number seven. Round number seven, Historic. This is going to be a full match. Going to be a, a full match, not a... Uh, oh, hi, Marshall. Hi, Cedric. How are you guys doing? You guys doing good? Uh, this is going to be my Auras deck in Historic against Blue-White Yorian Control. And on paper, this matchup looked bad. Again, open deck lists. Uh, Toro had, is playing Yorian, is playing 80 cards. Four main deck portable holes. Three main deck Otherworldly Lights. Main deck farewells. Just honestly, it looked like, like kind of a nightmare here for us. But got a battle. Got to go through here. Self Savior on turn one. We see land go for uh, for Toro. Our hand's not great. Um, we've got Spell Pierce, which is great. Obsession. We draw Spirit Dancer, which is a little bit awkward because like we kind of want to be able to protect it. And this is a spot where you can go for the Obsession. It's a little risky against them because they have Archmage Charm, which can steal, can, can steal the Savior. But Obsession will just fall off anyway because they won't be able to, I, won't, I won't be attacking. So, options here are Spirit Dancer or Obsession. Uh, Toro also had multiple copies of Jawari Disruption in the deck. Um, so, uh, decided to go for Obsession here. Toro actually has Mystical Dispute, uh, which is the it's a one of Mystical Dispute. So, goes for March. I go for Spell Pierce to protect it. And now I get to draw a card on my Obsession, which is pretty good. So, I get to go in, get to attack. Draw the card, replace itself. Draw the Spell Pierce, which is great. So now I have Blessing, Spell Pierce, or a Spirit Dancer. My hand's pretty good here. Uh, we see land. And we see an immediate uh, an immediate Archmage Charm to steal the Savior. So the Obsession will fall off. Like, they don't, they don't get to keep it. They say they should get a Savior, which isn't very good for them. So basically, they, got, they just paid their mana as Sorcerer to, to, to kill my creature. Uh, but now I got to go Spirit Dancer. Now, I could play Sentinel's Eyes immediately to draw, but still interested in leaving up Spell Pierce. Uh, there were a couple of Narsets in Toro's deck. Uh, hope I'm, I'm saying my name right, hopefully. Um, and, uh, so, play Spirit Dancer here. Not a matchup where I have to rush at all. So, she's gonna say go. She's gonna say go here. I have Blessing as well, which is great. So, here's Omen of the Sea. So, now we see, uh, March of Other Royal Light, Archmage's Charm. Great hand for Toro. Uh, great, great hand. And, again, this is the one of Mystical Dispute in the 80-card deck. Uh, in the 80-card deck. And, uh, kind of like a good reaction shot here, honestly. Let me see if I can get the... <laughs> When I get disputed, it's pretty uh, it's pretty funny. So, so our thanks for a bit. Again, Savior and Play doesn't really do much. Just a 1-1 one, one for them. Uh, most of it's just a kill spell. Now I get to untap, fire up Sentinel's Eyes, and uh, I have Spell Pierce to defend it. So you can see the face cams here. It's me me jamming to some music. And uh, I draw Cartouche, which is also very, very good. And uh try to show my face here when I get... Uh, when I get uh when I get uh the main the main deck mystical dispute the one of mystical dispute so go for Sentinel's eyes. In response, we're gonna see the March of Other Royal Light one mana up. With one mana up, I know there's no card in the entire deck that can stop that can stop this except for the one copy of mystical dispute in the eighty card deck. So here's Spell Pierce, and uh, here's <laughs> there's your one of mystical dispute. And uh, of course, commentary was commentating how. A extremely unfortunate that it was one three, but it is what it is, you know, whatever. So, Spirit Knight gets exiled, and now I'm in a really bad spot. But, draw for, draw for the thingy, Sentinel's Eyes goes to the graveyard, still have Luris hanging out, and uh, Toro's down two cards in end. So, Archmage Charm, Omen of the Sea, Yorian, of course, I can't see that, but there they are. And, uh, draws a Triome. I've got Luris still available, still battling here, still battling here. Gonna cast Omen Main Phase, which is honestly a kind of a, weak, uh, a show of weakness. Uh, from my side, seeing what's happening, because uh, looking for something clearly. And draws Soul Guide Lantern. It gets to play Lantern. This is like a one of or a two of to eat my Sentinel's Eyes, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, eat, 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 eat the Eyes, play uh, Attack for One, play Triome, and say go. 
So no counter spells up, but unfortunately I can't really punish at this point. It's untap. And I draw Drake, which is a pretty good draw, honestly. So now I actually have a uh, a thing to play, to pants, and to end to protection protection spells. So very good draw here, very good draw. Uh, a lot better than buying lures. So play Drake, play Cartouche, draw a card. Just a land, but now at least I have a threat, right? I have a 3-2 flyer, it's got first strike, so it can attack through Yorian. And I have a blessing in hand as well to protect it, which is great. Tauros X, the Soul Guide Liner, draws a card. Shark Typhoon and Disruption, so pretty good. Um, can buy Lur can buy Yorian, of course, which is going to be a pretty, pretty, pretty big blocker. Uh, at the moment, though, Archmage's Charm and Shark, Shark Typhoon do not answer this Drake. So, again, Cartouche gives the Drake first strike, which is pretty important. So, Torgon thinks things through here a little bit, deciding if they want to buy Yori into hand or leave an Archmage's Charm. Thanks, first time chat. I appreciate it. You're great. So, can I just say go with Archmage's Charm and Shark Typhoon up? I draw a Sentinel's Eyes. So, a great draw, honestly. So, I can fire up the Aura on of Drake and draw a card. Draw an Esper Sentinel, which is a good draw also. Get to, uh, get to jam in here with the Drake and the Token. If I attack with the Token, they can uh, they can Shark Typhoon and block it, but it's just a Token. Whatever. It's not that big of a deal. We'll see what I do here. I don't actually remember if I attack with the Token or not. I do. So, fire in. I have Blessing to protect my Drake, which is great. I can buy Lurus' turn also with the mana left over, which is also great. So, Cycle Shark for three. Make a 3-3. Three, three. This blocks my 1-1. One, one. They take four off the Drake. Also really, really cool is that there were four copies of the Wandering Emperor in uh, in Toro's deck. And of course, the aura gives vigilance. So Wandering Emperor cannot touch my Drake, which is cool. But Toro draws one of the four main deck copies of Portable Hole. And uh, plays Portable Hole. Sentinel Tax goes off. Gonna pay it. Here's the hole. I'm blessing my, my Drake to protect it. Now the problem is, though, that... Uh, the Yorian can flicker the portable hole and have another shot at the Drake, which kind of stinks, but draw off Blessing. And actually, it looks like uh, that Toro's going to counter the uh, Blessing here. So counter the Blessing, kill the Drake, and now uh, now the Drake is under the hole, though, so if the Yorian flickers it, um, I'll get it back, obviously. Now, the problem is that if I go really big on a creature, they can just, like, kill all the auras on the creature, basically, and give me back the, uh, the Drake, so... We draw. Our graveyard is okay. Uh, play Lurus. Obsession and Cartouche. So play the Cartouche. Now, interesting here, we could put it onto the Sentinel because we can try and uh, make Sentinel bigger so attacks is higher as well as attack this turn. Putting it on Lurus also puts all of our eggs in one basket a little bit. Uh, but again, the threat of Yorian flickering the portable hole is kind of a big deal. So, need to be aware of that. Challenging game here. Challenging game. Roy says, the only thing getting better at Magic or the top age swimming is overdue anyway. I would say I'm worse now, but I was in my prime um, when I was like playing Pro Tours all the time all the time and stuff and like actually focusing on playing. But what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? So a big, 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 big inflection point here, uh, deciding where I want to go big. So also if I go big on the Lurus, they can't portable hole off the Yorian, which is pretty important too. So long think here. I've got the Cartouche from Yorian. I mean, from Lurus. I have Cartouche in my hand. I have Sentinel's Eyes also cast the ball from the graveyard as well. So, decide to go on the Sentinel, which will uh, increase the tax, make, make, some, make some draws better. Go uh, go big on Sentinel. Exile the spells I can't recur anyway. Also gets me to in for an attack, attack for three of his turn. So, first do I gain Vigilance. Gets it in. And now I can spread out the Cartouche on the Lurus as well. So, I have two good attackers next turn. They're one mana short of buying Yorian and playing it, unless they draw an untapped land. Chan, thanks so much, appreciate it. I will get to four years. Still less than three you regardless. Grats on top eight. Aww. Thanks, friend, appreciate it. So they draw a tap land. So probably one of the worst possible draws. Uh, because they can't buy Yorian, it's also not a spell. So gonna just cycle the farm line instead of playing it. And draws a Wandering Emperor. But again, like I said, Wandering Emperor, not so good because Wandering Emperor can't hit my Vigilance creatures, which is huge. So, why not block, sack, make indestructible? Um, they could have done that. Uh, yes. 
They could have done that. You're right. I think I realized that like after I attacked too, uh, but they chose not to do it. So I, I don't know. So I guess a minor mistake on both of our parts for sure. So there's Wandering Emperor. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's in hand, but the Yorian is in hand. And now the awkwardness is that the, uh, the portable hole reset from Yorian is a problem. So I decided to go big on, upset on the Sentinel here and go for an attack. Uh, they can go for the chump block. So they can chump block here so I don't draw. Then they get to Yorian and blink onto the hole. Oh, it's true also. That is true also. Losing savior means I get savior back for Lurus. So I hold Cartouche because I want to have I want to try and draw a uh, to try and draw a uh, a uh, Saram effect. So I can draw a card off of it. Toro draws Wrath of God or whatever Day of Judgment, which is a pretty pretty insane draw. Um, I will draw off the Sentinel, but pretty good draw, killing everything here. Uh, so once again, back to square one. Draw land, but I have a Drake. You can just keep going here. So play with Drake and just keep the uh, keep the ball rolling. Now, of course. Once again, the issue here is that the portable hole is still hanging out. Yori instead of flicker it, so I can't go too deep on this Drake. We draw land. And uh, just gonna pop off here, honestly. Draw a few lands, so gonna go for the cartouche here. Or am I not? I'm not actually, I'm sorry. So I did so not, so I didn't want to play into the uh, the Yori and Flicker the Drake. The portable hole on the Drake. And again, holding the cartouche has value because if I just draw Saram or Spirit Dancer, I'll be able to draw more cards as well. So. So. Big thanks for uh, for Toro here. Has a couple good plays, obviously. Casting Deluge is pretty great. Uh, Yorian here is not bad either. You know, Yorian just bouncing Omen and portable hole is pretty good. So let's go for the Deluge. Hits land, Faithful Absence. We draw Saram. So there you go. So now I got my Saram going. Fire up the Cartouche. Draw two cards off Saram and Drake, which is great. We draw a Sentinel's Eyes and a land. At this point, you just got to go, I think. So we just go. Pump it up. Draw more cards. Even if the Drake is killed at this point, um, we're still drawing two cards per spell, which is pretty good. So draw Staggering Insight and draw Arcane Flight. Um, and now, you know... Now, also the important part is that Drake is big enough to actually get through the Emperor. So, play Insight, draw two more cards. We got Land Sentinel. And decide to just keep going here. Interesting that Toro has the Absence and is uh, is not using it just yet. I draw Spell Pierce, which is pretty nice. Decide to keep going. And it's important to note that even though I'm going big on this Drake, I'm drawing a lot of cards so I can rebuild if it gets killed. So, go for the attack. It has Vigilance. Of course, Wandering Emperor can't hit it. This is where I make a mistake. So, at this point, um, I play Sentinel. And in response, Toro casts... Uh, hold on. Toro casts the Wandering Emperor. Now, I have, a, I have a, a mental lapse here. So, I'm thinking about um, the Emperor just not mattering at all because I have a Vigilance Flying Attacker and I want to save Spell Pierce for like a possible, I don't know, whatever, Farewell or something like that. Uh, but I sort of just like mentally lapsed and forgot about Yorian and the Portable Hole for some reason. I don't know why. So, I decided not to counter this, which, is, which was, I think, a big mistake. Um, so, that gives them Emperor and then multiple things to do with it, uh, which is crappy. Have Spell Pierce up. Emperor makes another token. So now the ground's pretty gummed up. So now the problem is this Drake is you know, our, uh, we're pretty heavy in this Drake. And now we see the Portable Hole get flickered. Now the Emperor can get flickered also for another token, which is pretty cool. And the Omen gets flickered too. So now we're in like pretty bad shape uh, because my Drake gets reset. I can keep building onto it. But now like there's just so many cards available for, for Toro that like things get a little mucky here. Um, I can replay the Sentinel's Eyes, which, which is obviously cool. But kind of a tough spot. And now my self pierce is also just like it's not dead, but it's you know getting worse as time goes on for sure. So 
Makes another token off the Wandering Emperor. And uh, we draw another Sentinel, which is kind of cool, I guess. And now we got to rebuild our board and be able to attack into this board. So we got to get this Drake big enough. We have plenty of draw, you know. Um, you know, we're we're ready to rock and roll here. He says, the Sentinel's eyes are so good. I freaking love this card. It's just always there for you. Almost never goes away. So fire up the uh, Sentinel's eyes. I'm a little surprised I didn't cast the, uh, the Sentinel first. But we see a March here. And I ended up being able to spell Pierce the March, which is pretty good, I guess. So it ended up kind of like kind of working out. But I think I'd be in better shape if the Emperor wasn't in play. So spell Pierce that. Draw more cards. And now I have a lot of auras here to make, make my board nice and wide. Trying to, to attack through this. Uh, unfortunately, I was drawing to... Uh, a flying aura to win the game here on the spot. Uh, any any arcane flight w wins the game for me. It's like off two flyers, so they're only one flying blocker. But uh, just gonna keep fast casting spells and trying to find it. It's funny at this one I have like I think seventeen cards in my deck or something like that. So should I keep casting auras? Gotta figure out how many auras I want to cast. Gotta get the Drake up to five power, which is important, so it can attack through the Yorian. Draw a blessing, which is actually pretty sick because the blessing if. A 1-1 one -one doesn't get blocked. Well, actually just kill them. But... So, Eyes goes to a 2-2. Exile some more cards. Again, with, with Luris already gone, it doesn't matter what I exile at this point. So, draw cards off of that. Um, I think I was, like, a little concerned with decking here. so why I didn't play the Spirit Dancer. I also wanted the, the most chances possible to find my Arcane Flight. Which might have been wrong. Um, I'm not sure. So, at this point, like, we have an almost lethal attack. Um, we have lethal next turn, you know. And while Toro has, you know, six lands in play, uh, doesn't actually have a lot of matter to do things as far as, like, Flash and Mike or whatever, stuff like that. So, Yorian Chump blocks, uh, block on Sentinel, block on Saram, block on Token. So I, I didn't, it didn't sneak that one token through for that, that sne the cheeky damage, or the, the cheeky kill. So damage goes through. Things die. And now it's probably just Sentinel, Sentinel go with the uh, the blessing up. Could also play the eyes. I'm a little surprised I didn't go for the, uh, I mean, maybe I, I was out of arcane flights at this point. I could have just kept drawing for the arcane, the arcane thing. I don't know if we've already used all four, or all three of them, honestly. So, just going to dump to the board, leave, leave Blessing up, and say go. Yeah, I mean, I could have dug for the Arcane Flight. Actually, I don't know. Long, tough game. Long, tough game. So, we say go, and, uh, and Toro draws Farewell. There are two Farewells in the 80-card deck. Pretty good draw. Pretty good draw. Um... Of course, going to choose all the modes here. This is going to wipe everything. Uh, my board, my graveyard for Sentinel's Eyes. Uh, it's going to kill the Portable Hole, which will also exile the creature. That's how it's, that's how it's templated. Uh, it's going to kill everything but the Planeswalker. And uh, not too good here. Not too good. Two Arcane Flights already gone. Yeah, all, all three flights might have been gone. I think that's why I didn't go for it. Which makes kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. So there's your, uh, your Sentinel Triggers. And... Uh, Got to pay for him. And unfortunately, Blessing does nothing against Farewell. Very good against Wrath of God, but not good here. So, there's your Farewell, and everything goes. I'm just, like, kind of double-checking the Portable Hole thing here. Uh, I, just, I, I, I briefly forgot that the uh, the Portable Hole interaction works well for them. So, I still have Emperor in play. Now it's 25-3. to 3. And again, if I had Spell Pierce the Emperor, it wouldn't be in play anymore. But we can just keep going here, I guess, right? Here's Saram. Here's Drake. Drake is, you know, almost lethal. Of course, I don't know about Shark Typhoon or Absence in hand. A lot of lands, but I've also drawn a lot of cards. I only have 14 cards in my deck at this point. So the way Farewell is templated, Farewell exiles the artifact first, then the creature. So uh, there isn't a trigger on Portable Hole. Just once it's not there, the creature is. Just how it works. So pump the token and attack. Thought here for a while. I could have blocked with Saram and pumped. But just seemed unnecessary. So I could also just fire out the pump spell on the Drake to draw a card too. So just like I'm a 25, whatever. Just, you know, it does remove, remove, remove the blocker in theory. But if it goes wrong at all, uh, it could be bad and like just didn't seem worth it. So, 
So hard cash shark typhoon, which is kind of bad news for me because it means they have, means they have, have, at, least, have, have at least one more spell in their hand. Uh, and Sego. Of course, blessing can't protect things that aren't ored. Uh, it's only plus two plus two until the creature has an ore on it. So that absence is gonna be pretty good here. We see absence on the Drake. Make a two two shark. Could have cantrip my blessing inside of not to. Draw land. Fire off the clue. Draw land. And uh at this point. We could fire in Saram for an attack, trying to use the, use the pump spell, but they, they double block. It's terrible for us, so just got to stick up. Just got to stick up. Cycle Farmland, draw Portable Hole. That's pretty bad, too. And uh, at this point, things are obviously slipping away. Once Shark Typhoon is down, making making multiple tokens a turn, uh, it's pretty hard to push through. At this point, honestly, I'm also just like, I have like 11 cards in my deck. Um, I don't know if there's enough gas in my deck to actually win the game anymore, because part of winning the game is like popping off and drawing more cards, too. So, tough game one. Uh, tough game one. Um, you know, the one on Mystical Dispute was brutal early on. Uh, the Farewell. I know coverage, they were saying how how, uh, how Cedric would have smashed his keyboard if he was me playing this game. But um, is what it is, you know. Draw Saram. Gonna keep playing. Play Saram, play lands, I go. Funny to see here, uh, Jawari Disruption can just be a 2-2 flyer. Again, so many lands is being said in chat, but like, I have 11 cards in my deck. You know, I'm, I've drawn most of my deck at this point. So, like, drawing as many lands kind of makes sense, honestly. So, another portable hole. Game's basically over at this point. I'm just going to let uh, let Toro kill me. You know, waste a little more of the clock. Obviously, this clock could matter in a matchup like this. So, uh, so I'm dead. So, tough game one. Tough game one. Uh, the kind of game you got to uh, rally back from, for sure. And uh, sideboarding here, I get to bring in two copies of Dovin's Veto. And I get to bring in... Um, I think that's it, right? Let's do the Vetoes. So I bring in Vetoes. I cut two Saviors. Um, there's a few Day of Judgment effects in the deck, but most of the things exile, so Savior isn't very good. And I kind of just want everything else, you know? So we have three Spell Pierce, two Dovin's Veto. Um, keep, keep the curve nice and lean. Just keep things going here. Don't really want anything else. Yeah. If I had Spell Pierce the Wanderer... Um, Maybe that would have gotten me there. Um, I think I could have played a little cleaner against the uh, the Yorian as well. I'm not sure. I feel like I could have played, could have played a little better that game. I'll not be an S not be S not be at SCG Indy now. So looks like uh, Torah brings in a Nezahal, three more disputes, and then two Bane Slayers, and removes a Farewell. I guess scared of Spell Pierce and two Vetoes. Pressing Beast and Lantern are kind of obvious, but. Pretty surprised to see the farewell goes up. Rick, so the, the farewell, you play it as it reads. So you exile all the artifacts. Then you exile all the creatures. Then you exile all the enchantments. If it said exile all creatures, then exile all artifacts, uh, the portable whole creature would come back. So, open up in my hand in game number two here. And my hand's not very good, despite being three lands, a creature, and three auras. Because, or sorry, two auras. And a, you know, the problem is that this hand falls to one removal spell. It doesn't actually do anything. And Toro's got four portable holes, four March of Other Worldly Lights. You know, just tons of stuff here. So I ship this one back. I want to see Esper Sentinel. I want to see Spell Pierce. I want to see multiple creatures. Uh, you know, I think this is a really easy hand to keep, but I think it's incorrect to keep this hand. Um, so tank for a while, decide to mulligan this hand, even though it, I think it looks good, I think it's a trap. In most matchups, this hand's pretty good, but just can't risk it here. We also see also the Drake also gets hit by Mystical Dispute, which is important also. So Mulligan into a hand that's two two creatures and two ores, which is better. Tora Mulligans also into a kind of rough hand with no white, but Narset is very, very good against me. I dump the insight. So, much better hand here. Even though I didn't find the Sentinel or Spell Pierce I was looking for, uh, just having two creatures is much better than having one. The, the reason I kept the third land over, this, over the Aura is that it's really, really important in a matchup like this to make your land drops. Because you got to be able to interact also. you got to be able to play Spirit Dancer on three with Spell Pierce up. So, get a little lucky and draw Sentinel, but obviously it was on turn two, not turn one. So, I'm just going to play a Saram here. I'm just going to play a Saram. Fire up a Saram and say go. 
You gotta make your land drops so you can actually interact. It's very, very important. So, draw Sentinel's Eyes, and now we got some uh, some thinking to do here. So, just gonna go for Spirit Dancer, and get a fire on the, the, the worst aura, the one that if it goes to the graveyard, we get it back. Not gonna have Obsession, actually, sure. So, so play Obsession here, draw two. Uh, this plays into Dispute, but... Wait, what? It's, wow. So, Toro really valuing this... Uh, how, one he has almost did not dispute the obsession. Allowed me to draw an extra card too. That's kind of wild. Wanting to save it maybe for like spell pierces or stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. We see land go. I draw veto, but now I'm now I'm in the driver's seat. Very similar to the Arclight Phoenix matchup. Um, um now I've got like two good things in play: a sentinel, a veto, a spell pierce, and now we're in the driver's seat fully. We're scared of sweepers, but we have a good clock. We're drawing cards. Uh not gonna play an aura here. Because I'm already attacking for three and drawing a card. So I want to leave Spell Pierce and Veto up. Uh, so we can deal with multiple things. Uh, you know, kill spell here and something else there, whatever. So. So you see Archmage Charm, I'm going to try and steal my Sentinel. So draw a card off that, which is great. And I'm pretty happy to Spell Piercing here, honestly. Uh, I get, Spell Pierce is essentially just keep my Sentinel, remove a blocker for them. Sentinel is also pretty good against me. Uh, it's quite annoying because I'm playing a lot of spells, obviously. So, just spell pierce that, leave Veto up. And again, this is why I wanted to leave both spell pierce and Veto up so I have access to both of us. Now they go land Wrath, I can counter it. They don't have the Wrath, though, so it works out well for me. And now we're off for the races. Uh, start drawing cards like crazy. And there you go. So, gonna scoop the game up. I think a smart scoop. Uh, they were definitely gonna lose that game. No no point of wasting time. No point of wasting time there. I think it's pretty, pretty smart. It's important to note that occasionally uh, the me playing in a tournament, like, disagrees with me my analysis because i'm talking while i'm analyzing when i was playing this i'm just playing and uh i think there was a sideboard bug here so we had to do a little break so we get right back into the games here game three there we go and uh so we actually jump in in the middle of game three this is weird all right so uh i already have a drake in play a veto and spell pierce so once again in a very good spot uh because i have a threat in play and counter spells in hand which is exactly where i want to be for game three here i also play their soaring city which is good uh, I don't know their hand at this point, but I'm doing pretty well. Uh, my creature attacks around Shark Typhoon, which is great. Spirit Dancer, which is great. Yes, Esper Sentinel is what makes this deck viable, in my opinion. Um, with Esper Sentinel and Spell Pierce and Veto, the deck ceases to be about just like, ho ho, two drop aura, 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 and more about like being able to actually interact. So Cycle uh, Typhoon, make a blocker. Drake's coming in. Here we have Veto and Spell Pierce here, which feels awesome. Now, we do see the Yorian and this, this the Portable Hole interaction coming up coming up again here, which is important because we need to make our creature big enough to get through Yorian, but not go so big that Portable Hole screws us. So, probably need to deploy like Spirit Dancer here. Also want to leave up Veto and Spell Pierce too. So... Tough spot. This is why I was saying mana is so important. It's really, really important having a mana in play to, to be able to cast all your spells like this. So, think for a bit here. I did not hit the soundboard while I was playing in a tournament. No, I did not. So, play Spirit Dancer. Now, if I play Spirit Dancer, this is a tough turn. So, I could play... Thanks, Peace Bone. I could play Spirit Dancer and play an aura on Drake and draw two and try and draw land. So I really want to have Spell Pierce and Veto up. But if I don't draw the land, it's kind of risky. I'm just not really in a necessary spot to be greedy here, I don't think. I also want to spread that spread out the, the auras a bit too. So considering that they Sentinel's Eyes here, I believe I decide not to do it. Uh, to lean a little more on the conservative end. I can like, just do it next turn. There's no real reason to do it this turn and take down my uh, my shields, except for maybe drawing a land, but it's just not worth it, I don't think. So if I go for the aura and don't draw a land, my shields are a bit down. They're a bit down. So think for a bit here. Big turn. I go for it. Okay. So I go for it. Sure. And we draw obsession. So don't draw the lands. They go. But again, now we're spreading out my my threats for uh for this, this inevitable inevitable portable hole. So this is a big turn. We see a land. Now, it's important to note that Toro only has two white sources in play. Uh, so, Toro's got two double white spells and then a single white spell, but can't really double spell, so I want to play Yorian. 
Thanks, Leggings. Appreciate it. So, big, big turn here. Taurus to decide what to do. Uh, I've got two, th two threats in play. I think my veto is, like, kind of faced up at this point, uh, based on the mana I've left up, left up over multiple turns. You know, veto or spell pierce is very, very possible. Long think here. Long think. A reminder about all of us, your first time hit that follow button, watching on YouTube, make sure you get like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to be going over all, all, my, all my matches today from this tournament. That'll all be on YouTube as well if you missed any of them. I think I'm going to split it into three videos. We'll do day one video, day two video, and top eight video. So big, big thank you. Big, big thank. Decides to go for a March of Otherworldly Light pitching the Wandering Emperor. So kind of a weird play um, because they already played a land. They can't play a sweeper because they only have one white left over. They can play Yorian, however. And I can't counter the Yorian. So if this resolves, my Drake is gone. Then they play Yorian. I can't counter it. The portable hole hits my Spirit Dancer. And I'm kind of out at that point. So as painful as it is, I got to fire this veto off here. And, you know, on coverage, seeing the farewell in their hand, it looks kind of bad. They only had two farewell in their deck, in their 80-card deck. They actually boarded one of them out, too. Uh, but I decided to go for the veto here. So... This baits out the veto, so now the farewell is live for next turn. Uh, here's Yorian. Flick at the portable hole, buy some time. If they had double white, I might have not countered that, but I'm, I'm not sure, honestly. So, so we see the portable hole get flickered here. This is going to pop back in and steal the Drake, probably, or the Spirit Dancer. One or the other, I'm not sure. Probably Spirit Dancer. Sure, Spirit Dancer makes sense. So now I go to my turn, and now my shields are a bit down. I only have Spell Pierce. So we have our Drake. You gotta get the Drake bigger to try and get the Viorian. Gonna start with obsession on the on the Drake. Draw Spirit Dancer, which is pretty good. Play Spirit Dancer. Now, of course, I can't really play around the farewell here. But the most important thing is that I'm also just drawing a bunch of cards. So part of the comeback mechanic against rats in this deck isn't just countering it. You just draw a bunch of cards. You know? And I mean then, then they, they wrath and you just have a bunch of cards in your hand. So I draw a blessing which insulates against the Day of Judgments and Wrath of Gods, but not the Farewell. So, tag my 6-5 Drake. They chump block with a, with, a, with a Shark. And now I have Blessing and Spell Pierce up. Pretty happy just to say go here. So I'm insulated against a Wrath of God. I can Spell Pierce Farewell if I don't draw land. And uh, the big moment, they don't draw the untapped land. But again, even if they did, I think I'm still ahead. Because uh, I have Drake and Blessing and Luris and Thingy. So, they play the Farewell. They, play the, they pay the one for the uh, Sentinel. And Spell Pierce... Can I say it? Get off my plane. There we go. You happy? You happy? And now it gets on tap, and I'm, I'm just in insanely good shape here. So, exile this. An aura would kill them, I think, here. I don't draw it. So, but uh, whatever. So now we have attack for five. And now we're just in phenomenal shape. Uh, play land here. Attack with everything. Yorian chump blocks. Put them to put them to five. Put Loris in hand. Play Sentinel. Say go. Yeah, deciding how big I want to go here. So attack, chump block the Drake. You can see our clocks are low. This is a this is a uh, a long, long match. That game one was pretty insane, pretty insane. So spell pierce is the nut. Yeah, spell pierce is also the card that makes that makes it like actually good too. So put Lurus in hand. I think I play Sentinel here. I'm I'm obviously a little bit scared of a wrath, but I'm only scared of exactly farewell because. Any Wrath, I can use Blessing to protect my Drake. And if they have Farewell, I want to draw cards off of the Sentinel. Try and draw try and draw a Veto also. So, so they go. They draw Omen of the Sea, which is great for me, obviously. Okay, them casting Omen's like me going, oh, yeah, okay, cool. And uh, we can go to the reaction shot here. We can see the uh, the reaction if you all want to see that. And uh, so they don't pay. And they don't pay. I draw two cards, which is awesome. And again, if they have a Wrath here, I have a full hand. You know, so... They omen, they bottom, bottom. We love a good bottom. And uh, just say go. And we're uh, pretty good to go here. This is that, That's my tournament face, all right? I got music on, a little MF Doom. Serious face, lights are off. Just playing some magic, having a good time. A lot of hip hop. I feel like hip hop's a really good medium where it's not too upbeat, but it has, it has some vibes to it. 
I like a lot of weird like post rock stuff. That's that's too slow. I like heavy stuff. That's too heavy. Hip hop's real, real good. Good middle ground. And uh, so yeah, so bump it up, and they're just they're just dead on board here. So, and there you go. 7-0, undefeated on day one of the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Championship. It's me. I'm the one that's undefeated. So, we're going to keep this match review going on stream, but I'm going to have a, a different video for each day. So, again, streams will keep going, but YouTube folks love you. Like, comment, subscribe. The next video will have day two of competition. So, undefeated, day one. Game. Blouses. Let's go.